What brought you, Adam, and Balin together? Oh. In uh, 2014, I taught uh, corporate law at uh, Hungarian University of Economics. Adam was my student uh, at the time. He asked a lot about the Bitcoin, uh, which piqued uh, my interest in this sector. I asked uh, him a few years later if he know some exciting project. Uh, this uh, is when we first talk uh, about uh, Wasabi Wallet. Uh, since I thought putting this together would be a big task, so I asked uh, my current business partner to join us. He was violent. The rest is history. So, no problem. Uh, first off, I just want to know how long do you think you were working on the concept or developing what is now Wasabi Wallet? Hmm, it's a good question. I started in 2015, December, Christmas Eve. <laughs> that was the first time when, uh, when I, I created a lean canvas for Wasabi Wallet. Obviously now there's been a lot of iterations with the software, so it's been 1.0 and now we're coming out with 2.0. Um, Hopefully, <laughs> right. we are on the on the way on the <laughs> towards it. <laughs> yeah. um, with all of this in the past three years now, because the company just turned three in, in October, um, it's quickly expanding. You know, there's new rebranding, there's new office, new service. I mean, everything, new employees. Um, why do you believe this is necessary, and what is the purpose of all this growth? Uh, yeah, whether it's necessary or not, that's a good question. I don't know if it is necessary or not, but this is how it basically turned out. We are kind of growing organically. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we wanted to jump from 1.0 to 2.0, it uh, at first we thought it's going to be, yeah, obviously a great and a huge thing, and it's going to be a great jump. But uh, originally we didn't think it's going to be so big <laughs> and such a huge task. So now we see that it's, it's much bigger and much broader and much more complex than we originally thought. And probably this is the reason. Did you think this is something that was uh, viable? Like, did you think that there was a need for Bitcoin privacy and that this could even support a, a business at the time? Or was that something that developed as it was developed? Mm -hmm. I did always think that it was viable because because that was my idea. I saw a Reddit post about join market, which is a earlier coin join implementation. And many people really wanted to use it, but it was a command line software. And still many people were very enthusiastic about it. So I thought I'm going to write a UI for it. And, and that was the first idea of a survey wallet. Do you think the model that uh, ZK Snacks is using to fund open source development is something that could be uh, uh, imitable? It can be replicated onto other projects? Definitely, yes. I think this is just something that it's also an innovation basically from us and not many organizations or not many entities were currently uh, thinking about this uh, in the past, but I think we are we are kind of succeeding in this and it turns out to be working. I don't know how it's going to scale, whether it's going to be able to scale, but uh, we are going to work on it. And uh, what made you decide to start 2.0? If I catch up on my story that I was doing Joy Market, and then I was doing something else. And for, I think, three years, I learned a lot about Bitcoin privacy. And, and in 2017, okay, then two years, in 2017, I um, created a, a framework called ZeroLink, where I also described the Xiaomi and CoinJoin system, uh, how, how this could work. Now, obviously, it's one person uh, puts together this whole system. I, I saw a bunch of improvement opportunities, but you know, I, at one point, you have to ship and things. I was already two years into that, right? And uh, so at, at one point you have to go. Yeah. Yes. And when I found the point, point where, okay, now I can be 100% sure that it provides uh, 
perfect, reliable privacy, then I said, okay, that's enough for me. And there are these other lines of development and research that I'm not going to pursue just yet uh, later if I have time. And then Wasabi was out there for like two years already. And in 2020, January, um, I decided to, well, I, pr I think probably it's time to review the whole privacy literature of Bitcoin and, and see what we can actually, actually do with it. Talking about the company, what makes working with Wasabi or at Wasabi different from working for another company? Hmm. I think how we started, we tried to keep that atmosphere as we started. We started four or five people all together. We had two core developers, the, our UI developer and, and Lucas, obviously, besides the three of us. And from that five people, we, we grow out, out into this, let's say now we are 30, 31, 32, maybe I, I cannot even keep track of it. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, at that time we were like a family and we, and that worked very well, that openness, the transparent way of working and transparent way of operations. And we try to keep that. It's getting more and more difficult, to be honest. But we try to keep this atmosphere. And I think this is the reason why most of the people like to work for Wasabi or work with Wasabi. Talking about you know integrating Bitcoin privacy tools and making it more accessible. And then I guess 2.0 is trying to take that further. Is that correct? Or how do you see that? Like what is mm -hmm. kind of the main gift that 2.0 is trying to give? Mm -hmm. So with 1.0, we arrived to a point where it has undeniable perfect privacy. If you don't do things like using up coins, those have never been mixed. Now, if you do those things and you're probably going to do those things because you're impatient and you, you don't want to have a bunch of uh, dust in your wallet and don't know what to do with them. Um, so privacy has been achieved by Wasabi Wallet 1.0, but now we have to make it easy, more broke space efficient, therefore cheaper and faster, which kind of comes hand in hand with block space efficiency. But you had to make that privacy to be to be to be easy yeah. to be to be for 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 the normal people for Everyone. for for your grandma or yeah. for Peter McCormack <laughs> and his grandmother specifically. Where do you see Wasabi in five years? Well, definitely bigger than currently because we already have some ideas where to go from 2.0 or if we are finished or let's say release 2.0 then where we should focus there are so many things uh, and if we want to succeed in, in in these fields then then we probably need to grow further uh, where i see wasabi in the next four or five years uh, is one of the main or major actors in the software development of, of Bitcoin and which is privacy uh, related. Mm -hmm. Where do you see Wasabi in five years? In El Salvador. <laughs> okay. We are going to be in El Salvador and do the revolution from there. If, if, if the world is really going to to a more authoritarian future, then then we will really have to to go somewhere because, like, you know, uh, you know, Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there is a big wall. Uh, they built a wall to keep out the free folks, who has no government, has no leader, just a guy who they voluntarily follow, and then they. They didn't realize, but they ended up on the wrong side of the wall. Right. It makes sense. That's a good analogy. Uh, what about for the software then? In five years mm -hmm. time, what do you think? Uh -huh. So for the software, I have very specific vision. Unfortunately, I would have or fort fortunately, I have to convince the developers 
to 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 go at least in that direction. But in my estimation, with Wasabi Wallet 2.0 now, we created something that uh, unless there is a huge breakthrough in in something in Bitcoin privacy, there must be a huge breakthrough to 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 replace Wasabi Wallet 2.0. So assuming it it won't happen, confidential transactions won't get into Bitcoin, which is a safe bet at this point. We will have a software that's stable and works well, but still like limited in terms of like who can use it, right? Desktop users, that's that's it. Okay, so we have to make sure that we we don't fall behind in the innovation in, in the one hand and we make it accessible for people. So how do we not fall behind in the innovation? We work on the Lightning Network. We don't want to get into it too much just yet because there are a lot of things coming down the line and but but it will eventually be inevitable to have lightning network it's it's customary for a bitcoin wallet to have it eventually uh if if it wants to like stay in business because you know blockchains how do you scale a blockchain you don't um on the other hand we have to make it accessible we have to 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 make sure that people have privacy on on mobile be it with us or with someone else developers can mess around with 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 the software and maybe create their own 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 great innovation um we have to localize the the software right like guess what not everyone speaks english and we have to actually make sure that hardware wallets we can do hardware wallets with coin joins because hardware wallets are are um like it's not without hardware wallets it's questionable how secure your Bitcoin is. Although I am not that paranoid, but you know, like that's probably much, much better yeah. with hardware wallets. So have to have to make sure people can coin join with hardware wallets. What does privacy mean to you? Well for me privacy is is a is a personal thing and it it's freedom of choice and uh, it means that you are free to choose what and how to share from of, of yourself to the to the broader majority of people to say or or to your or to those people who are surrounding you or who are who could be watching you and uh, this this circle is obviously narrower or broader for different people uh, for me, what's very important or I keep private and, and don't like to share is, uh, is my family life, basically. So that is something I keep 100% for, for myself and for ourselves. The next thing is probably my financials. This is also what we, we try to keep private and we do not really share, but this is obviously also something that people uh, handle differently. But if you have the choice or you have the option, whether you want to share this or not, that's a, that's a good thing and you are free to choose whichever you want to. So I think for me, privacy is that I, I have the option to, to choose what I want to share and what I do not really want to share. Um, and this obviously leads to, to, to freedom, basically, whether you are free to do this choice or, or not, because if you are, if you are not, and uh, you are under, let's say, surveillance or, or whatever, then, then you lost this, this kind of opportunity. Privacy is your ability to selectively reveal yourself to the world. That doesn't mean, I mean, I'm here in camera, right? So, so, so I, I have no privacy. No, 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 that's, that's not it. I, I it's, I still have my ability to selectively reveal myself to the world. I reveal myself to this camera, right? Uh, I'm in control. If I cannot control that what I reveal about myself, now that's the loss of, of privacy. So it's not about secrecy. It's about control. It's an ability and it's not a human right. It's a human fight.